is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 hyundai accent courtesy of jack g and volvo hyundai and york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so wanted to check this one out today mainly because the starting price point actually of the accent comes in right at around fifteen thousand dollars which is insane considering the prices of cars these days this is a new car for around fifteen thousand dollars that is wonderful and it actually gets better than that because as far as the warranty goes with the hyundai accent you get five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten year one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain so you got extreme peace of mind there not only that you get three years of complimentary maintenance so you do not have to pay for the oil changes and the tire rotations things like that for the first three years of ownership on this thing so that is absolutely amazing as well which in my mind makes this quite possibly the very best buy when it comes to budget cars out there right now especially when it comes to new cars so that is wonderful so for all of those reasons, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2021 Accent. First one being the SE, starting at $15,395. SEL, which is the one we are in today, starting at $17,750. And lastly, the Limited, starting at $19,500. And so regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 120 horsepower at 6300 rpm 113 pound feet of torque available at around 4800 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual for the se trim level only that's that bottom price point there or an IVT, which is essentially Hyundai's continuously variable transmission or intelligent variable transmission in this case. That transmission comes with the SEL that we have today, the limited, and it is optional actually on that SE trim level as well. But so then when it comes to the zero to 60 time, that is gonna come in at approximately 8.5 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 29 in the city, 39 highway for the manual transmission, then 33 in the city, 41 on the highway for the IVT. So either Either way taking regular unleaded fuel but a little better mpgs there with the ivt transmission but before we do any kind of acceleration test which we will of course test out in a second year did want to mention there is a drive mode button just in front of the shifter when you press that you have one choice which is the sport drive mode it did immediately just downshift for me or simulated downshift i guess you could say because it is an ivt after all so it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level giving you more power on demand for merging onto the highway, things like that. So ultimately that sport driving mode is going to adjust the throttle response and the simulated shift points on the accent. So having said that now, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's put the new accent here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. Here we go. Go little car, go. Dang, winding out these RPMs. Yeah, actually, not as bad as I thought it would be. You guys know, it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world, but for a Hyundai Accent, I was expecting a lot worse, quite honestly. So, actually kind of surprised me, I gotta be honest. So I would say, based on the way that felt, you're not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway or anything like that. That was, I don't know, that was kind of fun for a subcompact car, I guess you could say. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration test, as always, braking is equally important. And so I wanted to emphasize when it comes to the braking, the braking configuration is actually going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. For example, if you go with that SE trim level, you're actually gonna get front disc rear drum brakes. However, if you jump up to the SEL or limited trims, you are going to get four wheel disc brakes. Therefore, you are gonna get a much better braking feel, much better braking performance if you were to go with the SEL or limited trims. However, having said that, this is a subcompact car. So quite honestly, they probably put the front disc rear drums knowing that you're not fully going to need the four wheel disc brakes necessarily. However, 
Having said that, it is going to give you better braking performance in the end. But all in all, when it comes to that 60 to zero stopping distance, it actually comes in at a fairly respectable 122 feet. Not the very best for a subcompact car, but then again, a lot of times with SUVs and stuff, it can come in at 130s, even upper 130. So 122 feet really isn't all that bad when you think of it that way. So I will say though, the braking feel is definitely on the softer side. So it doesn't have that initial bite that a lot of other compact cars will give you. But still, like I said, in the end, 100. 22 feet really isn't all that bad for the braking statistic there but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension with gas pressurized shock absorbers in the back torsen beam rear axle with monotube shock absorbers all in all as far as the ride quality goes it's actually a little above average for the subcompact segment i will say that so definitely a quite nice ride quality compared to a lot of the other subcompacts that i've driven in its class like the fit like the yaris cars like that so really the ride quality is above average for this segment I'll definitely give it that as far as the steering feel goes it's actually kind of nice once again this is a smaller car it definitely points you in the direction that you want to go fairly well I will say the steering feel isn't quite as nice as let's say the Toyota Yaris but still definitely points you in the direction that you want to go and quite honestly I'm kind of having fun driving this on the back roads here in Pennsylvania so definitely quite on point there as far as cabin noise goes once you get up in higher speed you get a little bit of wind noise creeping into the cabin and of course the end engine is kind of noisy as well especially when you really hit the gas but then again this is some compact car it's pretty much as expected so we'll say not the worst that i've ever tested but certainly not the best either but touching on visibility then i can see perfectly fine out the back you usually are not going to have any issues with sedans and that is certainly the case with the hyundai accent there's actually a blind spot mirror within the driver's side mirror here as well i did want to mention that to you guys that is going to of course assist with visibility as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Hyundai Accent. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Hyundai Accent finished in admiral blue in the snow yes front wheel drive is definitely doable in the snow as you can clearly see right here but anyways here's where the changes actually come in for the 2021 accent there's going to be a couple different color changes for the 2021 model year forge gray now replaces urban gray for this year and linen beige has been discontinued so in case anybody was curious about the changes for this one that's essentially it but anyways let's go ahead and start up front on the accent here up front you will get that large front grille with chrome accenting found across the board for every single trim level halogen headlights are going to come with the se and sel trims also the automatic feature for those headlights meaning when it starts to get dark out they're going to turn on automatically for you that's actually going to come with the sel trim level that we have today also the limited fog lights down below also for the sel limited trim levels as well and you will get led headlights with led daytime running lights only if you go with the limited trim level that is the one and only way you can get that and i do like the chrome accenting found in the fog light portions of the front fascia as well kind of ties together very well with that front grill we'll say that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the accent here all right, and so now that we are around side of this one, chrome belt line molding will come with the SEL trim level and up. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard with all trim levels. You will actually get integrated turn signals only if you go with the limited trim level. That's how you're gonna get that. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, you will find 15 inch steel wheels with covers for the SE, 15 inch alloys for the SEL, and 17 inch alloy wheels for the limited trim level. So therefore you are looking at the 15 inch alloy wheel design right now in case you were curious but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the accent here so swinging around back you guys could probably see it up there there is a matte black shark fin antenna just below that you do have the accent lettering of course just above the driver's side taillight there and by the way led taillights only come standard with the limited trim level that is how you're going to go ahead and get them in case you wanted it and just below it all of course there is a single exhaust outlet just tucked away on the passenger side underneath there so Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All 
All right, and so now since we are around back of the accent, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the trunk itself. Of course, there is also a button on the key fob, and there is a button just underneath the driver's side seat as well. That is yet another way to go ahead and open that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there actually is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there then if he needed it. Then making our way to the rear legroom, that comes in at 33.5 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. And actually, that space is acceptable, I will say that. And the cool thing about the back part of the front seats is that it's not a hard plastic and it does have some give to it. So you can push that forward a little bit with your knees if you needed a little extra legroom back there as well. So again, this is how much space I have back there. And there is also a passenger side seat bat mat pocket for the SEL trim level and up for a little bit of storage there. And overall seats were plenty comfortable back there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats on the accent. Manually adjustable cloth seating actually Actually does come standard across the board for every single trim level I will say that you will find heated front seats if you were to go with the limited trim level only that's how you're gonna go ahead and get that and once again seats are plenty comfortable actually believe it or not so I definitely didn't have any issues there but taking a look at the steering wheel then it is tilt and telescoping it is wrapped in urethane so there is no leather wrap steering wheel available for the accent in case anybody was curious but 10 and 2 grips are plenty fine it's pretty much as expected there then make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip Flip it over, lock, unlock, and of course that button to pop the rear hatch. And I will say, it is a push button start if you go with the limited trim level only. Otherwise, it is actually a traditional key start. It is a switchblade key, which is kind of cool, but we do actually have that traditional key start, of course, since we have the SEL trim. So all I'm going to do, simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is all the way to your right. There is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel. It does give you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, believe it or not. It's telling me I got 345 miles left. That's pretty cool. Of course, trip A, trip B, the outside temperature as well, which is pretty cool. And believe it or not, there's actually a small digital speedometer up top there of the digital portion there. Kind of surprised to see that. I don't think I remember seeing that in previous years. I've reviewed the accent. So I don't know. That's pretty cool. I like seeing that up there as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality there is a power sunroof that only comes with the limited trim level if you wanted to go that route automatic climate control again only coming with the limited dual usb charging ports coming with the sel and limited trim levels and there's actually dual 12 volt power outlets up here in front of the shifter as well as an auxiliary port so that was pretty cool to see as well just behind that shifter you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest there's a decent amount of storage not the most of course i've ever seen but overall this is a pretty purposeful interior you also have an overhead sunglass holder found on the ceiling here that's always nice and no fancy finishes or anything like that there is a little bit of hard plastic of course but it's pretty much as expected quite honestly it's not that bad considering the price point of the accents i will say that but let's go ahead now and take a look at the tech display the se trim level is going to be the trim that's going to give you a smaller screen being a five inch color touchscreen display having said that the sel and limited are going to give you a seven inch color touchscreen display i will say either way you still get bluetooth and audio streaming but to get android auto and apple carplay you will need to go with the sel trim level or the limited and so what that is essentially if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the accent via USB cable and it will display free navigation up on that screen as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. The list goes on for other compatible apps as well. But that is pretty cool. That's definitely something I pretty much always have to have in my cars now. So therefore, the SEL might be the trim level for you if you wanted free navigation through your smartphone up on that tech screen. But also, of course, you can check out your radio settings up on that screen as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system of the Accent, you will find four speakers with the SE, six speakers with the SEL trim level and the limited. So having said that, you guys, I do believe you know what we have to do next here. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this six speaker sound system we have in our SE Ultron level. 
it's not too bad. It's pretty much as you would expect a six speaker sound system to sound. Not the most based in the world, but you know what? It's a six speaker sound system and it does the trick for the accent. You really don't need anything more in a car of this size. So anyways, not too bad. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech screen though, is when you do put the accent in reverse, you will find a rear view camera that does come standard for every single trim level across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention with the accent, actually, this is an IIHS top safety pick for the limited trim level only because it needs those LED headlights to be that top safety pick. So I did want to mention that, but front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there as well. There is a tire pressure monitoring system that also comes standard. There's a driver's side blind spot mirror, as I was mentioning to you guys. However, I will say that only comes with the SEL trim level or limited. It will not come on the SE trim. So I do want to mention that as as well and if you were to go with the limited trim level you will also get a forward collision avoidance assist system as well and so but all in all in the end when it comes to my final thoughts here of the hyundai accent this is one of the least expensive new vehicles today with perhaps the best value seeing as it comes with three years of free maintenance that's going to save you some money there's that 10-year powertrain warranty so for 10 years if the engine breaks if the transmission breaks you got peace of mind that's going to get fixed for free once again so really that is amazing not to mention the five years free roadside assistance if something were to happen as well so all of that is definitely quite a value when you consider all of that. It's also kind of nice that a subcompact can achieve an IHS top safety pick, although you do have to go with the top trim level to get that, but still it's kind of refreshing to see that as well. I'd personally pick the SEL trim level on this one, quite honestly, because that's the one that gives you the Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So but that's definitely the trim level that I personally would go with, not to mention the four wheel disc brakes as well. And overall interior quality is actually pretty good. Again, considering the price point, the only other option that I would consider in the subcompact segment right now, quite honestly, is the Toyota Yaris because it's a collaboration with Mazda. So therefore it has an amazing steering field, it also has incredible reliability because it's a Toyota, of course, and the Honda fit is pretty nice as well that they're going to stop making that now for the u.s at least not in japan but however i will say that one is a little more expensive when it comes to the subcompact market so i did want to mention that as well but overall very solid pick especially when you consider the value the hyundai accent very well might give you the very best value in this particular segment i will say that but that about rounds out this review you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you want to see what's coming next on the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold